In this video, we're going to look at user interface options with JSF. First, we have to consider what a web application is. A web application can show presentation to the user directly with HTML, XML, XHTML, or any other combination, where it's actually drawing the look and feel that the user sees and controlling what happens from one click to another. On the other hand, a service-oriented application is simply providing data to another application where that other application decides how to draw the user interface or uh, maybe it's a headless application without a user interface. So when we're designing our apps, we want to make them reusable so that they can be one or the other, so that they can have both presentation and a non-presentation data-oriented interface as well. So if we start by looking at HTML, this is traditional HTML. And if we look, for instance, at my UC homepage, which I've kind of intentionally kept with a dated look. In other words, I haven't really changed it since I first created this page about 14 years ago. A few minor updates, but I haven't really touched it since. This is as basic as HTML gets. So just some markup tags, an open HTML tag, open head, a couple of meta tags, and you see this was Mozilla Netscape, and that goes, does go back a while. A title. So you see what we'll typically have is an open element that open element does not have any slashes. And then a close element, that close element has a slash to begin it. So that's kind of what we consider a, uh, an open and close element set with text in the middle. Sometimes we'll have elements that are singletons that don't have an open and a close. In traditional HTML, uh, it would have no slash whatsoever. That's not the case in XHTML. In XHTML, we would typically put a slash before the close bracket there, the greater than symbol. Another thing with HTML, it was fairly common to use tables to do layout. Uh, that's really considered not good now because it's not flexible. It doesn't make for a fluid layout that we'd like to see on something like a, a mobile phone. So that's HTML. Now HTML, valid HTML, is XML if it's formatted properly. So there's this XHTML standard. It improves on HTML because HTML wasn't truly validated against a schema. It could be, but a lot of times the browsers would let you get away with sloppiness as well. So this is XHTML, and with XHTML, you see there's a DTD at the top that's saying that we're validating this as 1.0 transitional. Another thing is you'll see that this is uh, valid XML and HTML. To be valid XML, all the tag names have to be lowercase. All of the attribute values must be quoted. Okay. Uh, all of the tags can either be an open with a match and close. So if we look at, say, script here, there's an open script and a closed script. Or a singleton tag that doesn't have an open and a close. But if it is a singleton, it has to have one of these slashes right before the close bracket. So that's what we call XHTML. So if we look at something a bit newer, like plant places, uh, this, you know, maybe not absolutely, uh, uh, of course, when you look at your own work, you could always critique yourself, but uh, this is an XHTML page. It allows us to have a bit more fluid uh, look and feel. Um, so if I control you, we can take a look under here and we'll see uh, HTML, and we see this is X, XHTML 1.0 transitional. Again, a singleton tag is going to have a closed bracket right there, uh, so on and so forth. So let's control you to look at the source. Okay. JSP came about, we talked about this in an earlier video, and with JSP uh, you could have little scriptlets, which were little pieces of Java code that would run inside the JSP. JSP was kind of like an HTML page with a little Java mixed in. But we really don't like to mix together presentation logic with uh, presentation view, look and feel. Or especially we don't want to mix business logic with look and feel because remember the two different types of web applications, presentation-oriented and service-oriented. For example, uh, if you take a look at plant places, with plant places you can search on plants, and we're going to make our demonstration app is going to be a lot like this. So I say red bud. But take a look. You see how it auto-completes here, okay? 
And you see when I click on this and I hit search, it's going to show me a list of results. Well, when I first designed this web page, I didn't think about autocomplete. Uh, that came later when Ajax happened. So there has to be a way to feed the data that you see here into that autocomplete. Okay. While we're on a website, that is actually a service offering or a data offering where there's a feed of data that's feeding this autocomplete here. So when I start typing Redbud, it's going to get a similar feed of data uh, that we're going to see here. The only difference is the feed of data that comes to the autocomplete is just text where this is graphical. If you're curious what that feed looks like, I'll show you. It looks like this. Um, view plants JSON PL. And there we go. This is what that feed of data looks like. Now, the other option here is that when I started the Plant Places website in 2006, I had no idea that there would ever be a mobile app. Uh, the mobile app has a similar autocomplete, and it's dealing with data just like this as well. So see, this is a case where we have a website that is both giving the presentation and the service. So we need to make sure that we keep the presentation logic separate from the business logic. Okay. So we have JSF struts. I mentioned those in an earlier presentation. Uh, we are going to use JSF, and I'll show you a little example on our, um, on our virtual machine here. So when you start a JSF application or a dynamic web application with JSF in Eclipse, it gives you a little, it gives you a sample page, or you can just kind of grab a sample uh, of J of uh, JSF and start with that kind of like sourdough bread start with some dough that already exists and add, add more to it if you take a look again we have XHTML 1.0 transitional we want to make it like that we want to make it XHTML and really for the most part it looks like a HTML web page with just a few differences first of all take a look at this XML and SH what that is is that says we're going to take advantage of a new library, a new tag library. Anything that starts with H is going to come from that library. So you see there are a couple of elements here that begin with H. For example, head, and then we have body, and then we have form. They're just like the uh, HTML tags we know, but they're specially made for JSF. Okay, and just a reminder, we JSF enabled this application in a previous video by adding a facet. And so that facet means uh, the facet gives us a filter. Anything in the faces directory or anything in the ending with XHTML is going to be considered a JSF page. And that means the JF, JSF parser is going to run through it and it's going to look for tags like this. Okay, so we see head, uh, body. Now let's take a look down here. We have H output label, output label plant.name, and then we have input text. And for input text again, we have plant.name. And we have some other things here that you might not see if you're used to normal HTML. That's because these are JSF tags, and plant actually refers to a Java object, and .name refers to a getter setter. Now we have to do a little bit of work uh, to make this Java object available. We have to make what's called a managed bean. And we also have to use some kind of what's called dependency injection. Our options there are CDI or Spring. So in a future video, in our next video, we're going to look at how to use Spring to create uh, a Java class that will do this for us, how to create a managed bean that will work for us in this manner. Okay, you also see we have a command button. That's not normal HTML, that's JSF. Action equals search plants.execute. That's telling it to run an execute method on a Java object called search plants. Again, we'll need something like Spring or CDI to get access uh, to, that, to that class. Now, there are, there's a documentation about uh, the JSF tag libraries. What I would recommend, I put a link here to this JSF toolbox that has a lot of good information about the tag libraries that we can use. So uh, some core tag libraries, action listener, convert number, facet, uh, lots of good stuff there we can take a look at. Some validation logic.
And then also the HTML tag library. If you've done HTML before, uh, these will look familiar. Our next example, we're going to make an H link, which is just kind of like making a hyperlink. So we're going to take a look at that. So a lot of normal uh, HTML type markup that we can do to get our normal HTML look and feel, uh, kind of the old school look and feel we'd see on something, a page like this. But the good news is that these tags are extensible. And so we can use the tags that are given to us here, uh, or we can extend them, and we can extend them. And what we're going to do in a later video is we are going to look at something called Prime Faces. So Prime Faces is a rich tag library uh, that we can use with JSF. It gives us things like data controls, so we can look at data tables and things like that. And if I go to Demos and then Showcase, and then we take a look here on the left, we'll look at AJAX cores, so some AJAX components that we can have. Input, uh, autocomplete, love that one. If you are doing a web page, and especially one that you want to have on mobile, you definitely want to think about autocomplete because it minimizes mistakes, and it also minimizes the amount of typing that a user would do. So I could click here on autocomplete, and I can start typing in something like foo, and we'll see it will come up with just some examples. Uh, minimum length of three FO won't return anything, but add the third letter. Then all of a sudden we get some autocomplete max results five FOO. So this is a, a nice place where you can try out a bunch of these different tags. It's very easy to add these into our JSF application as long, well, I'll say this, it's easiest if our JSF application uses the Maven build system. And we're going to take a look at that in our next video, uh, because in our next video, we're going to look at Spring integration and Spring as well. Spring is also easier to do uh, if you have converted your project to a Maven build. So next video, we're going to do the Maven build, Spring, and we're going to take a look at how we can import this uh, Prime Faces UI. In addition to these tags, Prime Faces also gives us a series of themes that we can use. So if we want to have a, uh, if we want to have a, kind of a professional look and feel, you know, programmers and designers are typically two different skill sets. So if we want to have a really professional look and feel, uh, we can take a look. Oh, I was just there actually. We can take a look at some of these themes. Some of them uh, are commercial. Some of them do cost. Uh, others are community, so they are freely available. Up here, here we can click on this little swatch, and we can take a look at how these components would look in different in different themes, different coloring. So, very easy to use this to create a uh, professional looking user interface quickly. So we'll look at that in the next video. In the meantime, what I would point you to is take a look at some of these different uh, JSF tags we can use. Command button is just like a uh, push button, a submit button, a command link, hyperlink. Okay, input hidden, input secret, input text, input text area. So these are the different inputs that we have where input secret would be ideal for something like a uh, password. Okay, uh, some examples of that. So input secret at the top, as you type, it simply fills in with, uh, you know, bubbles or circles. Input text, and then input text with 40 characters, and then a text area that allows multiple uh, rows and columns, so you can get kind of essay-style answers. Uh, output label, output link, output text, output format. In this case, we're typically, as you see, showing output, but the important thing is where. If you take a look at the value here, the value could be just a normal static text, or it could be a Java bean with what we're going to call ognal syntax, object graph notation language. That means a Java object here, dot get book, dot get title. So it can chain together a series of getters. We can also use parameters, really good for uh, if we have a variable that we want to show in text or maybe some internationalization or something like that. And then we can also uh, use the same kind of style to submit or collect information from the user. So lots of good things we can see here in our JSF user interface. In our next video, we'll put it together and we'll see what it looks like. Look forward to seeing you then.